Hello, my name is Sonia Alfano and I'm going to talk to you about calorimetry, which is the study of finding the amount of energy in a material. More specifically, today we're going to do an experiment about a bomb calorimeter. We will tell you about its relevance to current technologies, then what materials you will need and how to build a homemade calorimeter. Then we will give you some information and show you how an energy and entropy balance is done. And finally, we will share results with you. As I already mentioned, calorimetry is a study of finding the amount of energy in a material. However, before we can fully understand this, we need to define a calorie. A calorie is a scientific unit that is defined as the amount of energy required to, rest, to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. The best example for these materials or substances that we can measure heat or energy to it is going to be food. Food has calories because our bodies process the food in a chemical reaction called combustion that breaks down the food and gives off heat. It is this heat energy or calories that our body uses or stores as energy to keep us going. Therefore, a bomb calorimeter or also called combustion calorimeter is a device that is designed to measure the amount of heat that is given off or taken in by a reaction. It is designed to be isolated just like our stomach from the surroundings, meaning that no heat can leave or enter the device. However, in this specific experiment, we're going to be showing you a homemade calorimeter, which also is going to exchange heat with the system as well, instead of only exchanging heat with water, which is the ideal calorimeter. Here on the left, um, it's a calorimeter from the industries, like a more industry calorimeter, and then the one on the right is pretty similar to the one that we're going to be building today, which is a homemade calorimeter. Our calorimeter today is going to look a little bit like this, and then later on we're going to explain to you which materials you're going to need and how to build it. First, let me tell you a little bit about our technical relevance for this calorimeter. As I already tell you, calorimeter is very important for metabolic studies, such as measuring the calories of the food that we eat in our daily basis. But also, a bomb calorimeter has a lot of uh, different uses in many different industries. For example, fuel testing industry. Um, this industry uses the test used to test the calorific value of solid and liquid fuels. This way, they would know if this fuel meet the regulations, specifying the total calorific value, quality, and purity of the fuel. Another use of the bomb calorimeter is going to be on the propellant explosive testing. This way, companies can find propellants and explosives heat of detonation. Then we have the salmon manufacturing, which uses a lot of hazard waste as an alternative fuel. And there's some government regulations that they have to meet. And the only way to know if they're meeting these government regulations is by using a bomb calorimeter on these um, hazard waste materials. Then we have some materials that we're going to be using. Hi, my name is Sean and I'm going to show you how to build a bomb calorimeter. What you're going to need is a one gallon paint bucket, a smaller soup can, about a seven or eight inch rod, thermometer, lighting source, and cork and nails for the inside. So how you build it is you use the tin snips to cut the front face out so you can see on the inside. You're gonna use plexiglass and screws to seal it to the front face. That way it is as airtight as you can make it. The rod is going to slide through the top, which also slides through the soup can. And inside the soup can, you have a pre-measured 200 grams of water. We drill the hole in the top of the paint can, that way the thermometer slides through it and it can hit the water on the ins inside. 
And on, on the inside, you take the cork and the screws, you glue them to the very bottom, which is gonna be used to hold your food source. Hi, I'm Mason, and I'm going to show you how this bomb calorimeter works. So first, we got to line it up. Uh -oh. And as you can see, the water is heating up. And at the very peak of that uh, temperature, we're going to calculate it. We'll take that calculation and we'll turn the change in temperature into joules of the amount of energy coming off of that Cheeto into the water. And from that number, we'll calculate the calories. And if you could see, the maximum amount of temperature that we got was 42 degrees from a start of 24. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm taking Thermodynamics this summer. This is our um, illustration of the combustion calorimeter that we mocked up. We This is the first the law of energy balance with respect to water for the... Um, Food items we're burning inside of our calorimeter. The energy balance goes as follows. This is the general form. We got our E energy mass in minus our energy mass out plus our work in minus work out plus Q in minus our Q out equals delta U. This is the expanded form of it. M times H1 plus V1 squared over 2 plus GZ1 minus H2 plus V2 squared over 2 plus GZ2 plus the work, uh, work in minus work out plus Q in minus Q out equals delta U. Since we know this is a steady state, we can say that delta U is zero. There's no velocity, no height change, no work in, no work out, and no heat loss for an idea system. <clears throat> that leads us to this um, more simplified form where we cancel out um, the velocities, the height changes for both uh, the in and out state, and the work in, work out, and heat loss, as well as the delta U, which simplified down comes to the mass times H1 minus H2 plus Q in equal to zero. And when we rearrange that, this is what we get, Q in equals the mass times H2 minus H1 we know that the change in uh, enthalpy over time at constant pressure is uh, Cp. So when we rearrange that, we get this form simplified down. dH equals Cp times T2 minus T1. If we plug this dH into our original formula here, we get our heat in is equal to the mass of the water times the specific heat index of the water times the final temperature minus the initial temperature. This is the entropy balance for our system with respect to the water. So the general form of the entropy is S in minus S out plus S gen equals delta S of the system. The expanded form of that is the mass times S1 plus Q in over TB1 minus mass times S2 plus Q out over TB2 plus S gen equals delta S of the system. 
Since this is a steady state, we can say that delta S of the system is equal to zero. And for an ideal system, there is no heat loss. So coming back down here to our expanded form, canceling out, we cancel out the Q out and the delta S of the system, which leaves us with this form here, M times S1 minus S2 plus Q in over TB1 plus S gen equals zero. So rearranging that, we get S gen equals the mass times S2 minus S1 minus Q in over TB1. Using our second TDS relationship, TDS equals DH minus VDP. We rearrange this to get DS equals um, the partial of H over T minus V over TDP. Since our system is at constant volume and constant pressure, we can say that DS is equal to DH over T, and this part cancels out because of the constant pressure, constant volume. We also know that DH over DT equals CP. So plugging all this into our original equation up here gives us our final equation, which is S gen equals the mass of the water times the specific heat index of the water at constant pressure minus Q in over the temperature of our initial boundary. All right, so here we have our knowns. We know the mass of our water, which is 200 grams. We know the specific heat capacity of our water, which is 4.8184 joules per gram degree C. We know our change in temperature, which is 18 degrees Celsius. We, the, our ending temperature was 42 degrees, subtracted by our beginning temperature, which was 24 degrees. And now we solve for the amount of heat in. We have MC delta T, which is our mass times our specific heat capacity times our change in temperature, which comes out to about 15,062.4 joules. So now we gotta convert joules into calories. How do we do that? We take that 15,062.4, multiply it by 0 0.239006, which comes out to about 3,600 calories. However, that's little c calories. So to get what, a, what you would find on the back of a, say, chip bag, you would divide that number by a thousand to get big C calories. And that is actually kilocalories. However, they just use a big C.